They say that a smooth sea has never made a skilled sailor. The odds were stacked against Jason Somchai in life, growing up without a father, being raised by his immigrant grandparents, and finding his way into the juvenile justice system. It was through the tumultuous seas of his youth that he discovered his anchor, martial arts. After being introduced to MMA by an uncle, Jason would rise through the South Florida amateur circuits and in 2012 made his professional debut. His journey as an athlete in person would come full circle when in 2024 he traveled to Laos and Thailand, reconnecting with his heritage, visiting the grave of a father that he never knew, embracing the spiritual side of Muay Thai, and learning that at 37, his life was only beginning. But believe it or not, I grew. Uh, I I did actually kind of move here to um, to South Florida to become an actor. I did some acting up in up in Nebraska. I did. I used to wow, do musicals. Okay. When I when like I said earlier, when I was when I was doing um uh, uh when I was in a juvenile detention, I had to go to a school where it was just you know a white school. I graduated a class of like twelve people, but I did uh I did musicals. I did like Broadway musicals and stuff like that. So I learned how to like kind of be an actor and stuff like that kind of kept that little trade in my back pocket, just like all the other little trades of my sports and my wrestling and stuff like that. I just had a little trade in my back pocket. But I came down here to South Florida, took a shot in the dark, became a fighter. And because of me becoming a, an MMA, in the MMA culture, I was able to like get myself into a, a TV show. The TV show was called uh, Burn Notice on um, USA Network. So I was able to be okay. on one of the, I was able to be on one of the seasons of the show on season five. So, right. yeah, I got to be part of Hey, guys. Welcome to another episode of C4 Podcast, Southeast Asian Athlete Achievement Through Adversity. My name is Coach Andetka. I'm here with my co-host, John Messina. If you guys haven't already, please uh, like, share, subscribe um, on our YouTube, on our Facebook, uh, Lao American Sports on Instagram. Um, we have a great guest coming on today. Excited uh, for him to come on. Um if you guys know of, oh, before that, yeah, if you guys know of anybody, any athlete that you would like to nominate or see come on that has a great story, please message us on either our Facebook page or on Instagram, all right? So without further ado, I'm going to let my co-host, John, introduce our guest. Yeah, so before we get to that, I'll make a couple announcements. Just want to remind everybody, our nonprofit, Lao International Sports NFP, is up and running. We've got our target on the 2025 SEA Games in Cambodia bringing a great contingent of athletes over there to represent Laos. Check out the webpage, laoamericansports.com slash LIS. You'll see with what we're doing. Um, if you're an elite level, internationally competitive athlete that might be interested in representing Laos, check out the website, reach out to us. We can walk you through the process, let you know what the qualification is, all of that. And then any support, there's a donation page on there. Laos has a very limited budget. I know it's still about two years out, but we're going to start to raise funds to try to put a little fund together to help these athletes that want to go over there to Thailand and compete to represent their ancestral homeland in the SEA Games. So that's exciting. Big things to come on that. So with that, we have today Mr. Jason Somchai. He's actually just back from Thailand. Um, so this is going to be a really cool interview. We've been following him for a few years here and had him kind of on the list to get on. And we're excited that we made it happen right as he's getting back from Thailand. Um, Jason, so welcome to the show. Uh, why don't you start off at the beginning? I know you you trace your own family heritage back to Laos and to Thailand. Tell us what you know about your family's origins there and coming to the U.S. Um, from what I know, because I've, I've been I was raised more on my grandmother and my mother's side, so uh, they're they're from Vientiane, from a little area called Tangon, um, and uh, just I guess a little little rural area on the outside of that little city. I didn't even realize that Vientiane was actually that small. I actually thought it was going to be big, big, you know, but um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, my my grandmother, my mother, everybody, they're all from Tangon, that little area over there. So, I mean, from what I know, I mean, they just, they moved over there after the war. They crossed the river and, and waited at the refugee camp until it was time to go. So, yeah. So that's in Vingjung Prefecture. Uh, the, yeah. sort of the, the countryside outside the city. And Owen Pomavong Scoggins is from there. She's a pro disc golf player we had on 
So you're the second wow. guest from that tiny little town to make it on the show here. So yeah, a little tiny little area, man. So yeah. I mean, I mean, it was good to actually kind of go visit there a little bit to go kind of see where my where actually where my grandmother is from. You know, that's that's deep. You know what I mean? And 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 just me chasing after it alone a little bit. So it was like it was really really like a, a blessing moment for me. So this was your first time. Yeah, first time, man. I mean, I'm originally from, you know, I was born and raised in Nebraska, you know, to come to Nebraska. I'm a, from, I'm a small town boy, literally a small town boy. Just put a cowboy hat on me. You won't see me any different. You're from the Midwest too, man. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Illinois, we got our cornfields and all that. So yeah, oh, tell yeah, us man. more about, tell us about like, when, you know, when you were born, what year, brothers and sisters. Okay. Um. Um. Well, so I'm, I was uh, I was born and raised in in Nebraska. I uh, I was, you know family basically got sponsored and got you know kind of kind of migrated over there during the uh, during the eighties and nineties when like Campbell Soup was around, like the big old chicken plants and stuff like that. Um, so my, when when we were raised, I basically I was raised in that little small town and uh, um, still had a Laotian community because that's where most of the Laotian people got migrated to. So we still had a little Laotian community and. I was still able to grow up traditionally, and that that that's something that that I'm I'm blessed to have had in my life is being able to be, you know, grow up that way a little bit. You know, didn't didn't lose lose so much track of everything, of of my 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 heritage and my roots. You know what I mean? So just going just coming back from Thailand and Laos, man, just knowing that that I I, I should never take it for granted. You know what I mean? Yeah, nice, cool. cool. Yeah, there's actually fairly large law communities out there in the plains because of all the food processing right there were jobs back in the 70s and 80s yeah. uh slaughterhouses chicken houses like I said food processing soup factories you name it man jobs yeah. jobs jobs brought the people jobs, to the great place jobs, <laughs> man, yeah man but for the, the 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 american way man yep well so you're growing up out there but how did you get into martial arts okay um martial arts man i mean uh i i, I you know i grew up watching martial arts I me mean, and everybody any any asian kid would watch it you know martial art movies so you know that was in the tr intriguing like moments about it but as i got into it i was watching uh channel seven on thai tv one day and i remember me and my grandma we were just watching and we were just you know when she was looking at people swinging elbows she was like oi, ay, oi, <laughs> and so i remember those little moments man it's that it's the moments that we, we me and my grandmother had together watching that you know like watching people like throw down and she's actually sitting here watching it with me on Thai TV. But then again, you know, having that little Thai TV channel, you're not going to get too many, you know, Thai channels anyway. So it was either fighting or she, you know, don't want, you know, watch a Thai TV and she's going to watch whatever's on there, even the commercials. Yeah. So well, those are these, yeah. There's just moments that me and my grandmother just watched it together. So, I mean, I kind of enjoy that part. And then I end up getting into martial arts when my mom, uh, took me to a Taekwondo class one day. And uh, that's when I, you know, I finally got in, you know, into punching and kicking a lot more and hitting little pads and stuff here and there. And then that's the, that's probably the, the, the most I've got into it. How old were you? Um, I was probably, I, I want to say 10, 11 years old. And I remember it was in a, it was a it was a mall storefront, and that's you know I was walking through, and I'm like, Mom, I want to try that, I want to try that. And she ended up uh, putting me in for like a month one day, and then I just you know kind of enjoyed it. And that was when I was a younger you know younger than, but then as I gotten older, I got into martial arts a little late. You know, I mean, I got into martial arts a little late, probably around 24, 25 when I started fighting actually. So. Um, Let's go back real quick. I mean, when I was growing up in Nebraska, I, I grew up as a wrestler, you know what I mean? Being in that that small town, you know, you grow up the, um, getting into sports in high school sports and um, just doing whatever you can to kind of take up your time and doing whatever you can, whatever your parents tell you to do, because they want you to kind of like, you know, try to adapt to the environment, you know, go hang out with the kids in the public schools and, you know, just do your best and be a kid and make it normal, you know? Yeah. So it sounds so, like it was kind of casual when you were a kid, wrestling, Taekwondo. And then in what, then in your twenties, it's when you took it, started getting big time serious. Is that what happened or? Yeah. 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 Um, when I, uh, 
I was I was already wrestling, so I mean, I just took I took a shot in the dark because I I already had this little you know background of doing a little bit of martial arts in my in when I was younger, and me being able to get part of like a a wrestling program. I was wrestling a little bit at at, at a York State College for like a, a little like intern program, so I was able to kind of get some some time in my later years with you know a little bit of a competitor competitor's edge a little bit. So when I got here to Florida. My uncle, he was our my uncle. He was already like doing MMA. He was doing MMA here and there, and then he started getting into it really, really deep. Two thousand five, uh, became a pro fighter, and then I just kind of started like you know trailing behind him on that one, and then uh, wow. got into my so, first so, fight. So your yeah. uncle, your uncle's a pro MMA fighter. Yeah, my uncle's a pro MMA fighter as well. Yeah, yeah. He just he he jumped into it. He jumped into it late. Also, it's just that you know, thankfully I was right behind him, and I'm like, hey, I'll try it along with you, uncle. <laughs> Yeah. What's his name? So All we right. give him a shout out. All right. Bunmi Somchai. Bunmi. Bunmi Somchai. Yeah. All right. MMA okay. fighter. Yeah. MMA fighter. Well, that's, uh, that's rare, man. That, that's rare to hear, especially at that time. Right? We're, we're talking early 2000s. Yeah. Um, yeah. Early yeah. 2000s. And uh, now wow, what, when, what organization did he turn pro? In? Um, he, he turned on. Um, it was just a bunch of local Florida organizations. They, they have different promotions and stuff like that. But he, he went pro. So over here in like Florida, the Florida State. Wow. Yeah, wow. And that's where I went pro as well. I went pro in 2012, but my first fight was in 2007. Like first, first, like real fight. I jumped into my first MMA fight, um, not knowing what to do. I was just a, a wrestler, you know, took a shot in the dark. But then again, I took a shot in the dark and uh, knocked them out in 17 seconds. And then my life changed ever since. Wow. So yeah, really, it was just, just out there through a Superman punch. Watch so George St. Pierre on UFC, and I just tried it one day, and then all of a sudden my, my life changed ever, ever since that. So it was crazy. Yeah, so that caught the attention of the different promotions and things. Is that what happened? Yeah, it caught the attention of every promotion, actually, down here in South Florida, especially in okay. South Florida, because they, they're, they're always looking for fighters. And it's a very, very big mecca for, like, MMA. A lot of mixed martial arts are down here in South Florida. So, like, you know, you got to hear big teams like, American top team and, and, uh, uh, kill cliff and stuff like that. So a lot of UFC fighters come yep. from South Florida. Yeah. Well, Andre Sukum thought even moved down there. Yeah. 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 Like getting the yep, training yep. in Rhode Island. Right. So like you said, there was an ecosystem that you got. Yeah. Be in that, down yeah. There. He came down here. Yeah. We, me and him, we linked up and, uh, got, got to the right gyms and stuff like that. So we kind of crossed paths in, in the, in the big pro gyms as well. So, Ooh. Yeah, man. We both stayed out there, man. It's just that's that's what's good to know when you have somebody in in that that type of, you know, that type of background that's out there doing it too. So you know, you know, you're not alone. You know what I mean? And that's that's kind of also another comfort comforting fact is that you know you're not alone. I mean, hey, we're out here, we're doing it. So, just like I want to be on this platform, it's great, man. You guys are out here doing that. I want to be part of it. So it's always great to be part of something that's great. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's how greatness yeah. goes around. So. I just want to pass on good things to other people because good things have only happened to me because I've been a good person. Yep. So, so I've been a fighter and that's, that's, but the one main thing I really love about fighting is being a coach, being a teacher, being a developer um, and, and just guiding people, man. I mean, throughout my life, I never really, really got the guidance like I wanted to, but being able to grow up and kind of humbled through these, this sport and through everything, I was able to kind of take it all in and, and 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 chip it out. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's a process of uh, process of giving back. You know, yeah, we yeah, spend the, our early years like we're so selfish and we're just thinking about us, us. You know, and we I want to win this, win that, be this, be that. And I'll be honest, man, it's more rewarding to uh, to coach and to give back and to watch someone else, you know, succeed. You know, oh, so yeah. uh, it's, it's definitely it's definitely that giving back part. I mean, it keeps us alive too, you know, because our bodies, we can only go on for so long, right? Before we break down somebody, sometimes through injury, sometimes just age itself. Um, sometimes it's just like family obligations, but then like, you know, we keep going um, and we live vicariously through our, our students. You know, so. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. My, my students, they, they drive me, man. It's, it comes off of reflection, you know I mean? You, you're around each other every day. It only reflects off of each other. So I mean, I'm yeah. at the gym every day, every morning, every night. I'm always at the gym. <clears throat> My fighters are always working. So it's 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 good. It's good to be watching people that have grown up and also hold themselves accountable when it comes to real fighting. 
real fighting mm-hmm. sports. And so it's good to be able to be part of that. Like I taught them a lot. Now they know how to keep up with themselves and now they can only get better. Yeah. So it's good, man. It's good. So, it's a good thing to know. Take us through your pro career. So you went pro back in 2012. Tell us a little bit about some of your proudest moments, some of the promotions you fought under. Okay. So um, before 2012, I was an amateur. You know what I mean? I was just yep. doing things just here and there. My uncle, he was just like, hey, Jason, you should try this. You should try that. And I just, you know, all right, I guess I'll uh, don't really do much. You just, you know, your uncle's telling you, hey, you should do this. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let me try it. So um, I, I got through a couple of fights. 2012, I went pro, um, went through a promotion and, uh, just uh took a shot in the dark really man i mean i, I trained for for a good solid month I, I should have been training a little bit longer but i mean it's it's pro career um, you know you're making a bigger you're making a bigger check and and you just you go, you're going out there and, and and just taking that chance um yeah 2012 came a pro um started making uh started making a little bit of noise for myself and and started coming up in the rankings a little bit with the mma culture so i did a lot of mma um right now I, I i am into more muay thai now but um i used to do mma so since i was growing up as a wrestler i i took that to my advantage and always just applied it to my muay thai so that's why i've always kind of been able to kind of keep up in this mma world so um my proudest moments probably be me knocking out the guy in like 17 seconds on my first fight um uh got a i got a title on a three-man tournament that i fought twice in a day that was wow. a good one. No, that, that was a good one. I mean, I did that in Pensacola. Um, uh, let me see. It's great, man. That, that's the reason why I do these crazy things is because you, 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 you know, you take a chance and crazy things happen. You know, even me, I'd, I, I don't really do jujitsu much anymore, but I'll, I'll sign myself up in a tournament just to go roll. You know what I mean? So I'll do a new breed tournament. I'll roll with the guys, no training, still go in there and win first place. You know what I mean? Uh, just testing uh, myself and just being able to do that. So <laughs> um, a lot of proud moments, man. But I'd say the overall proudest moment is just being able to have a group of, of fighters. And this sort of cycles around all the time. But when I have like a, a big group of fighters, like eight fighters, they all fight on the same night and they all um, come out victorious. Now that that's that's a proud moment for me you know i mean that that just recently happened i just got back from thailand my fighters all fought that same night eight fighters they all won so i would say that'd probably be the biggest proud moment man and i just got back from thailand these guys held themselves accountable i taught them everything else but they held themselves accountable and so i mean that's that's overall a good thing so were these fighters from the u.s that you brought over with you to fight no these are, fight, these these are local- fighters from the u.s they're actually training and, and and staying ready and getting ready and, and doing their own thing over here while i was over there for the past oh months. i see oh okay oh so the, t- the yeah. tournament was here in the u.s not in thailand yes yes yeah. as soon as i okay. as soon as okay. i landed okay. as soon as i landed i was already cornering them like i was i had to get to the fight right away it was that same exact day i landed so um i didn't want to miss it but they did great all of them won and uh it, it really shows man the hard work yeah. shows and 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 uh obviously the guidance shows. So, you know, and it's great to be part of that, you know, so. So with that, I mean, I know you still fight, but you also have a business coaching and training. Um, tell us about that, how you started that and what you're doing. Okay. Um, morally, I'm, I, I, I do teach, I teach every morning, every day. I teach at a, at a very renowned gym over here in South Florida. Uh, it's called Florida Kickboxing Academy. Um, we got all pro fighters, all pro, you know, just, just high top tier guys. And I, and I have to be, you know, one of the head coaches over there. So I have, uh, personal training, um, ethics and I have, uh, um, fighter development ethics and stuff like that. So I do a whole lot of like, just, you know, guiding the person from the ground up. Uh, I have overall 27 champion fighters, um, uh, we have over 175 students at, the, our, at our gym and uh, everybody is all morally all want to be a fighter. So, um, yeah, man, I'm more of a personal trainer. I, I, I really like to do my best and try to develop somebody, you know, individually one on one. And it's really good to watch because you got to really, really get in depth and in tune into the individual themselves. So personal training in, in this coaching field that I do uh 
like I said earlier, reflects. Yeah. And, and it reflects. So it, it, I, I can only I can only get better myself if I can make you better. You know what I mean? So it's it's just some of those things for reflection so right back. Anybody on. either in the UFC or one championship or heading to one of those two promotions, those are our two favorite promotions. Okay. Uh, so what with, with that being said, um my my good buddy that we we uh work at the gym together, we're both two of the head coaches at the gym, Florida Kickboxing Academy. Um, he is actually a one FC fighter, Asa okay. Ten Pal. So yes, um Asa Ten Pal, he's a uh, He's top tier, top, top, top class, um, top class fighter. And it, it's great to be around, you know, just hardworking individuals like that every day and every night, actually. So <laughs> every day, every night we're around each other for, you know, but we're, we're both teaching. I mean, this is this gentleman is, is helping uh, uh, the growth of all our students together. Like, so it's, it's really cool, man. It's really cool to watch. We're both like really enjoying just the, the fact that we're coaching people and they're actually getting themselves better. Well, cool. Well, yeah. So, you know, we were excited to have you on. The timing worked out great, Jason, because I know you made this sort of from a personal standpoint, from a martial arts standpoint, this big trip over to Thailand and Laos. Um, why don't you tell us about that? Because it feels like it kind of rounded out your career here, right? And your life maybe. So, yeah, yeah, no. Um, let, let's just say, man, if it wasn't for martial arts, I, I, I would never figure things out. You know, like I would have never figured things out if I would never got into martial arts. If I would never just took a chance. So, um, because of the martial arts, and I got really, really influenced with Muay Thai and stuff like that, I ended up going to Southeast Asia. I wanted to go visit Southeast Asia for the first time. Um, none of my family has ever been back. You know what I mean? And it was just something that um, my fiance always had on our bucket list. And you know when you when you have a when you have a female by you and it's always gonna kind of get that you know right right there. So it, it was always something that constantly popped up. Hey, we gotta go here. We should try that. No, if you want to try to take your career up in the next level, you should go there. So my fiance, she's one of the most you know empowering women to help me like kind of get myself into the right headspace where I end up going to the country and my roots where I'm from uh and just wanted to know more wanted to learn more um as soon as i got into laos uh i wanted to know more about my family not just hey this is where they're from no i, I needed to i needed to know more i needed to get i needed to dig deeper a little bit um took a shot in the dark i found a picture of my dad <laughs> i found a picture of my dad on my my google photos and so i'm like hey you know what i'm here right now let me check this out let me let me let me post this up on this refuge Laotian refugee thing on on Facebook, and um, yeah, man, I found more information on my father. And that's, yeah, that's so enough. for those that don't know, you did not grow up with your biological dad, right? He was not in the no. picture, right? No, he was not in the picture. I I, just, I was I was like I said earlier, I was raised yeah. I was raised by my grandparents. So yeah, very I, I was raised tr very traditionally, learning the language eating the tamagongs and, and, and overridden padaks and, and <laughs> seeing guys and seeing cocks and, you know, all of that, man. So I, I grew up the old school way, you know, didn't get to eat a sandwich, you know, there wasn't no tuna sandwiches around. Lunch, lunch hour was taking the chicken and some sticky rice to school. So. Yeah. <laughs> so you, so you had never met him. Um, right. You never met him. Right. Is that what it is? No, no. Yeah. Never. I never, I never met yeah. my father. I just, I just heard little hear stories yeah. here and there about him, but I never really, I never met him. Um, it, I think right after I was born, he was already gone. Okay. Yeah. So then, so is he still over there in Southeast Asia? Do you know? Um, or? He's, he's, um, unfortunately he had passed away in 1994. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. And, um, but but being able to kind of get that information, like you know, that I, I it just kind of put a little closure for for everything that I that I was kind of chasing a little bit. I don't know, man. Martial arts, man, it really really kind of led me to really really kind of figure things out for myself. Yeah, it really kind of brought, yeah. brought, brought things all together. So, um, no, it's it's a crazy. This is it's a crazy story when with me going visit my my uh, trying to find my father. So I mean I went I went to Thailand like right over that bridge there's a there's another city called Nong Kai. Yep. Nong Kai, yep. Um right over that friendly bridge. <laughs> we crossed yep. that thing. It takes it takes all day to cross that thing. Um, friendship bridge. 
<laughs> yeah, the friendship bridge. Um, <laughs> we end up, um, we end up uh, finding. I found out more information on my father on, on uh, Facebook. Basically, uh, I had a, I posted up, hey, I'm looking for my father. If anybody has any information, it'd be grateful, you know. And all of a sudden, the next day. When I woke up, it was different. It was different time zones now. So everybody in America yeah. just, yeah. So everybody just starts flood, like right as soon as I wake up, my 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 messenger and everything just start flooding with, hey, I think your dad's my dad. Hey, wow. I, your stepdad is my wow. mom. Hey, your mom, my mom was your dad's wife. And I'm like, wow. whoa. Whoa. So that's crazy. Yeah, I just started that's getting crazy. hit with these messages and I was like, whoa, are you serious? Are you sure? Are you serious? And then they're like, yeah, who you're talking to right there is my sister. Who you're talking to there is my brother. And I'm like, oh, how do you, that, you know, I didn't know how to get my mind around it. I didn't know how to wrap my mind around it. It was crazy. Yeah, but um, big, all I, I just had, I just had to get more stories and they just told me more, more information. So I went over there to try to find um, I, and I end up talking to my biological father's last wife. She ended up sending me the death certificate and all that stuff. So I got the full closure that I needed. Did you um, get to meet these people that um, connected through Facebook? Like when you when you were in Byeongchan, did you get to you know meet them, have lunch or something or um, anything like that? You know, the the thing is that since I just got back from Laos and Thailand, they they actually live in Fort Worth, Texas. Oh, I have, okay. I have, I have I have three new blood brothers that live in wow. Fort Worth, Texas. I just found out that. My dad, he may have passed away, but I just gained three new brothers. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they're yeah. younger, so this this they're they're younger, so I'm I'm yeah. big brother. So they they need yeah. to know that. Yeah, big bro. That's awesome. I'm big though now. Big big bro is a fighter. They can they can. <laughs> wow! Wow! But yeah, yeah, I got I got I got three new brothers now. But since I just got back from Thailand and 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 Laos, uh, I haven't got the chance to visit them yet. And with with um. Lao New Year around the corner. Why not go to Texas to go visit? Oh, huh? yeah. Saginaw, right? That big one. Yeah, yeah. My, I might as well go, you know. I might as well go check it out. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. Right around the corner. So, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go. Uh, I told him that I'd probably visit them in, within the next month or so. So, I got to make time for that. If, if I have family out there, man, I, I have to I have to go. I have to go indulge in it, man. I have to go. Yeah, you know, yeah. Feel, sure. the, feel yeah. the vibes, man. I mean, the universe only led me to that, that point where I was at you know, in Thailand and Asia, you know, so um, the ironic thing is that <clears throat> on the death birth certificate, on, on the death certificate, I'm sorry, the death certificate, my, my dad, he died at 37 years old. It says lung cancer, 37 oh, wow. years yeah. old. He died at 37 years old around December the 15th or something like that. The ironic thing is that I landed in Bangkok, Thailand on my 37th birthday. Wow. Yeah, me landing there on my 37th birthday it's the yeah. same week that he passed away so you know that these these are just signs or something man it just lets me know that hey man he may have passed but i have a life to live so it's I, I almost wanna... yeah it's like 37 was the end for him but 37 is a new beginning for you right with yeah. this family yeah. you didn't even know you have all you know these yeah. siblings and <laughs> I know, man. this that's why it's so hard to wrap my head around this man and just you know I just got back home, man. I'm just like, man, how do I, how do I take this all in? I mean, I got all this information while I was over there and now I'm here, but you know, I got three new brothers now. I mean, I can, you know, I can't, I can't be any more grateful than that. I got, I have extra, I have, I have extra family now, but I mean, I don't want to give any Christmas presents or anything, but you know, extra family, you know, I got more, I got more brothers. <laughs> Yeah, that well, that's, that's cool. This will be a very special Lao new year for you. It's big down there, but this will make it even bigger you know oh yeah yeah that's that's crazy that's crazy yeah this is ironic man it's really ironic how that all like like raveled out to be because you know universe only leads you where you're supposed to be yeah and that just happened to be right where i was supposed to be you know and now i went over there to just go you know take a little vacay enjoy myself try to learn more about myself in a sense because i wanted to get into my muay thai a little bit more mm -hmm. um and then all of a sudden, I'm, I'm out there trying, you know, doing a little, trying to have uh, daddy issues, trying to find my dad, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> trying to figure that all out. But 
So were you able to train and fight over there a little bit or spar around? Yeah, with locals? yeah absolutely. How was that? How was that? Oh, that, that was great and, and hard all at the same time. But, um, so it's what you kind of do to the to it. Um, you got to adapt into that environment to kind of really, really build that mindset. You know, over there in Laos and Thailand, I mean, this is the way of life for them. It's the way of life. Like, and for me being, you know, raised in America and, and, and learning about the sport kind of essentially on my own, you know what I mean? Um, and understanding the, 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 the tradition and the culture of the, the white crew and the dance and stuff like that. It is the way of life over there for everybody. I mean, they fight for the money and they, they, they only fight for a little bit of money. Trust me. I know. Cause it was only a little bit of money. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Let me have it somewhere yeah. around here. You know, the whole pay scale is different, right? I mean, over oh, there, yeah. the whole pay is, yeah, like... man, it's probably the cheapest, cheapest, uh, Cheap as I've ever fought for, literally yeah. fifty dollars. Yeah, you weren't no. doing it for the money though, right? It was for no, the absolutely experience. not, absolutely not. You know, <laughs> absolutely be, not to be a like true Muay Thai fighter in Thailand or Muay Lao fighter in Laos. No, but they 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 make these and yeah. they take it and give it back to the family. They give yep. it back to the family. It's yep. and 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 that is what is what is that Lao Lao Gip? Yeah, well, keeps and they all, yeah, keeps and Thai bots. Yeah, they yeah. got they ha, they have fights all over Southeast Asia, and that's what's um amazing, you know. What I mean, and they're, they're it's it's the way of life. It's just it's human cockfighting, and they're getting paid for gambling so, you know, and, and people to gamble on them and stuff like that. So it's it's different. Yeah. How, how would it's you different. compare how you, how would you compare the talent that you saw over there versus the talent um that you saw here in the U.S.? How would you compare it? Um, I mean, that's a kind of a great area because the, the styles are very different. Let's say that the style is very different. You know, over here in the Western states, we tend to box a little bit more. We tend to be on our toes a little bit, kind of spring steppy. Muay Thai, they're just kind of like calm, cool, and collective. So, yeah. um, but the level, the level is high class level over there in Thailand because they kick a lot. They kick a lot. It's just that when you can get it, when you can get your hand on somebody's chin, your kicking doesn't matter anymore. That's why in one FC with the guys with the small gloves, man, if I can lick you with one good glove, you ain't going to kick me no more. Yeah. 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 So, but yes, in, in, in Thailand, it's really high class, like level when it comes to Muay Thai, Muay Thai versus Muay Thai. But if you get your average, uh, your average, like heavy handed kickboxer or something like that, He's more than likely going to get his hands on the the Muay Thai guy more than the Muay Thai mm -hmm. guy is going to get yeah. his hands that, on that him. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, but I mean, but but yes, the the but the level is is. I mean, we all everybody out there in in, in any sort of sports, they should be working hard if you're in a sport, an athlete. You know, what I mean, they have to put the time and effort into it. But like I said, it's 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 just the style. The style is what what makes the significant difference overall. Pretty cool. Well, so on your journey, man, what what's next for you in the world of martial arts? What's the future hold? Oh man. Um, overall, man, I think. Well, first, I I, I, get, I guess I gotta get married this year or something. Something <laughs> like that. <laughs> that's, that's important, man. That's important. Uh, man, yeah. Oh man. Um, yeah, I gotta get probably eventually probably get married here soon. Um, because I'm already engaged. I don't, I want to probably maybe get a few extra fights. Um, Got to get those. I mean, keep myself, keep myself relevant in the game while I still have this, this, while I have this now, you know what I mean? I mean, I'm not, I'm not getting too old. I'm only 37. I just turned 37, but I, I still have enough time to, to, to play and grind it out a little bit. Just, just sucks when you have to fight these kids, man. You know what I mean? When I was in Thailand, I had to fight like a kid. He was 23, 24 years old. I went all five rounds with him, but he was a Chinese champion. I took oh, wow. two day notice. I went two day notice to fight this kid too in, in Thailand. It was crazy. He was from China. He didn't speak a lick of English or anything. So I, I knew that he was just a hardworking Chinese guy that wanted to just rip my head off. And when <laughs> I was, yeah, yeah. It was, but it was a great fight, man. I was able to handle myself and, and, and still, still put, put him, uh, humbled him a little bit. So it's kind of good. Um, but no, um, really, yeah, I got, I'm just going to get some more fights before I retire. I'm going to keep on teaching, 
and 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 training people and and keep on changing lives every day i mean that's that's the overall thing man over just keep on changing the lives that i am changing every day being a part of it and probably uh eventually man maybe probably open up my own gym um i mean I've, I've always been asked hey why don't you open your open your own gym you're such a good you know you're so good at what you do and stuff like that i just never wanted to open up my own gym because the the freedom of getting around and you know and just yep. i can just be part of i can be part of the fight world you know like i already am like i'm aria i do cut man work as well i don't just do i don't just coach i don't just um do that i do cut man work like bare knuckle fc you guys ever heard of that i'm sure oh yeah Oh, those guys are leaking. Those guys are bleeding, leaking so bad. But yeah, I'm I'm one of the cut men for for that organization. So I actually do uh, the cut man work and stuff like that. And I've been doing a lot of cut man work for MMA fights over here in South Florida. So I've been very, very involved in the martial arts community more than like over almost fifteen years, over fifteen years already. Just being involved in in from amateur fights to pro fights, but um. Yeah, just freaking being a cut man. So I'm just gonna keep on doing the the things that just keep me in the martial arts world. Like I said, relevancy and just keep myself fighting a little bit. Maybe about 43, 44, I'll probably slow it down. But I said I'll slow it down. I'll slow it down. Um, <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, man, just help people build confidence, man. Just just help them know that there's 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 a hump over the hill. There's a hump over the hill. Yeah. That's- that's cool. I mean, don't let the age yeah define you. Co, how old were you when you were on the Mr. Olympia stage in your forties, right? Forty I mean, something. I turned pro when I was forty three. Yeah, that's I mean, actually oh, a long time dang. to turn pro because I uh, I actually took some time off when my kids were born. You know, and actually when my kids were born, man, I thought like my career was over. It was like I was I was so depressed. You know, I was I was happy, but at the same time I was like really depressed and. uh you know, I focused on them, you know, once they grew up and they were big enough to, you know, just kind of do their own thing. I was like, man, why don't you start, why don't I start working out again and see what happens? And, uh, you know, everything just came, came back, you know, so yeah, it worked out good. Worked out good. That's kind of how I like felt when I went to, to Thailand. I mean, I, I, I got there and I'm like, do I really, do I really want to do this? You know what I mean? I, I stepped up, like, you know, I do I really want to do this? This is a moment and point in my life where I've been doing martial arts and all this and, and being influenced by Muay Thai and stuff like that being in America. And now I'm all the way over here and I have to really, really tell myself, do I really want to do this? Because I was stepping up against a guy that had like 170 fights and I'm like, how, how do I, what am I supposed to do about this? You know what I mean? Except you know do what i know and um <clears throat> being able to establish the point that <clears throat> in clarity that i do what i know and what i know is good enough to be over there so i mean i know that deep in my blood in my in my my lifeline man there was a fighter in me a long time ago so yeah man just kind of just kind of pulled out and, and you know persevered through certain things in in that degree so with you, man, like you said, you're getting older and you just didn't, you thought you were getting, you know, it was, it was over. You still got right through it, but you got right back to it, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Came back yeah. quick. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, on, a lighter, on a lighter note, man, I was, I was checking you out on Instagram and you had this, you had this dish. I don't know if it was in Thailand or Laos, but like they're jumping insects, jumping around in that bowl. <laughs> what was that? What was oh, that? man. That scared the yeah, shit out of me. Man. I, like, I guess, um, it's jumping shrimp. I mean, apparently jumping it's a, it's, yeah, yeah. I, I guess it's a, a it's a big thing over there. It's a oh, big God. like you know, it's a good thing that they like to do out there. So as soon as I got over there, I had a, I have a, a a friend that that lives in Laos and he's actually a Muay Thai fighter. He trains at the one of the biggest renowned gyms in Thailand, and so I met up with him and we, we we've been talking online for like three four years, but we just never got to meet each other. But I told him one day I'm gonna come to Thailand and Laos and visit you. And uh, yeah, man, we just had a good time and dinner. You know, he's like, "What do you want to eat?" And I just told him, "I want to eat the craziest shit that you can bring out." <laughs> 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 and he brought out some jumping shrimp, and he brought out some uh, lap lut. You know, really, really oh, bloody. Man. Oh, yeah, yeah really, not, really. For those, bloody. for those that don't know, it's a that's bloody. It's the bloody, it's um, super duck bloody. Blood. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, and with some with duck blood too. Yeah, yeah. it was really, um, 
Yeah, man, my, my fiance didn't want me to eat that because she's like, I don't want you to eat that because you're going to end up getting sick. You're going to have bacteria in your stomach out here. We, have, we don't know this. We don't know this country, babe. Right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Well, that's awesome, Jason. So if you had to give an advice to anybody who was pursuing some kind of dream like this, a young person, what, what would your advice be, man? Oh, man. <clears throat> I mean, you lose 100% of the chances you don't take. You really do. You really do. I mean, you only need to take your step forward. You just take one foot. Just one foot, man. Take a step forward. Um, put yourself in a position where you're going to be comfortable being uncomfortable. That's that's the overall thing, man. And just be a good person. I mean, obviously, overall, be a good person. Give even if you have a little. <laughs> Just being yeah. being a good person overall. I mean, being being a Laotian, um, you know, individual growing up with my family and them being Buddhism, and it was always about Dijai Mi Hang Mutsukun and 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 give to everybody and and just so always you know have a kind heart. And I've always yeah. just try to keep true to it. I've always tried to keep true to that. I mean, like I said earlier, I was I was raised by my grandparents. They took me to the temple all the time. But you know, I, I but that 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 got embedded into me, so I I, I knew my roots growing up, even growing up. You're as fluent. A You're fluent in Laos, right? Yeah, well, that you. Yeah, nice, yeah. Nice. And that, that's what was great when I went went over to Thailand and Laos is that they kept talking to me and telling me, "Hey, where are you from? You from Vientiane?" And I'm like, "No, man, I'm from I'm from America." And and the thing is, the, the reason why is because the the language. They can tell by changed. your accent. Yeah, yeah, they could tell by your accent, but it has changed so much with the modern way over there in like, Southeast yeah. Asia. And then me learning from my grandmother and, and, and my family and alone only here, only here in America, it, it, I'm, I'm over there speaking Hebrew to them, you know what I mean? They're like, wow, this is like pure form language you're speaking to me. So I'm over there talking to them and they're like, you know, they're, they're, they're telling all these older gentlemen to come here, come and talk to this boy. Come over here, talk to him. Yeah, and I'm yeah. over there talking yeah, it was cool. I felt really, really appraised for just me being able to speak my language. And like I said earlier, I'm never going to take that for granted again. I'm so glad my grandmother, I'm so glad, I'm glad my grandmother bitched at me when I was younger. You know what I mean? It, it really got, a, the, 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 the language got across, you know? Yeah, that's, that's really cool. <laughs> awesome. Well, yeah, man, great story. We're, we're, we're so glad we had you on. Um, we, we look forward to continuing to follow you, both your athletic journey and this new journey you're on with this newly discovered family and stuff. Yeah, um, yeah, so. that's, yeah, that's yeah, man, I know, man. I, this is that's that's so crazy. I still can't even I can't even wrap my head around it. Like I, I'm I have three new brothers, man. I have three yeah. new brothers. Like, what? A, and this is also an ironic story. My father, he was a police officer. He was also into Muay Thai. He, was, he, was, he did some Muay Thai also. He was also a naval swimmer. So some or something like that. And my my brother, I have my younger brother, he's actually a police officer. Oh, okay. And oh. and I actually do Muay Thai. And so it's it's kind of yeah. It's it's there's there's something going on in the bloodline there. There's something going yeah. on in the bloodline. Yeah, for sure. I don't know what else to say about that, but I mean universe only leads us to the right place where we're supposed to be. So yeah. Well, cool. Well, this was awesome. Co, any last uh, questions or parting words for Mr. Jason Somchai? Um, let me see. Well, how many weeks did you spend back in Laos? Just curious. I, I, I said, I, yeah, um, I went, it, oh, how many weeks I spent in Laos? Laos, two, Thailand, uh, in that area. Okay. Oh, oh, two weeks, but then I, 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 overall, I was there for two, two months. Two months? Yeah. Yeah, I stayed there for two months. It was a long. It was. I wanted to make the trip. I wanted to make the trip worth it because a one month it seems like it's not even enough. Really, you get there, you still gotta get all the lag, and next thing you know, you you yeah. you, you get a little sick and stuff like that every once in a while because the air the air quality is kind of crap. So it's, it's it was different. I remember my first like couple of weeks there, I, I got a little sick and stuff like that, and I wanted to fight, but I couldn't fight yet. Yeah. That's were you awesome. mostly in Thailand or mostly in Laos or half and half? How did that? Um, I was I was mostly mostly in Thailand, mostly in Thailand. I was in Laos for just like two weeks, two three weeks. But I had, but as soon as I crowd crossed over, I went to Nong Khai to go. Um, I went to the temple where my father is actually buried. Or um, oh is man, buried. so wow. that that's that that's another story of its own. I, I when I I when I, he did pass away, he passed away in ninety four. 
I went to um, the temple because I got the death certificate from my stepmom. Yeah. <laughs> I got this death certificate and it said for he's at Wat Po in Nong Kai. This is his name. Um, put the son uh, Ruang Tong. Um, and uh, that's his name. This is his like. What, what, what is his name again? What was his first name? Put the son. Um, put, 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 put the, the son. Ruang Tong. Put the son. Yeah, Putasan put is son. my son's loud name because my oh. mother in law, yeah, because it rhymes with John. So my mother in law said Putasan Luke Tout John. Oh, okay. yeah. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. And you know, boy, oh, yeah, boy, Sin Harat, boy, Sin Harat, his name is Putasan. Um, he's a guy, yeah. he owns a bunch of restaurants around Fort Worth, Lao restaurants. We'll have to hook you up with some food down there, so, Jason. So, what what yeah, is that? P H, is it P P H O L T H A and then yeah. Son? P H O U T H A. T O S O N, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, Mine's on P H O O T H O O N T H O O P H O O. Wow. Yeah, so yeah, I got the, the death certificate and it said what pole and what pole and it was right over the bridge. It was right over the friendly bridge. So as soon as I went over there, I had to go wait at the bus station for a little while. So me and my fiance were like, you know what? Hey, the what is literally right here, walking distance. Let's walk over there. I literally walked over there. And I'm right there in front of my my father's urn. I'm not even five feet away. Five, I'm not even five feet away from my own biological father. Thirty seven years. Thirty seven years. So that's that's yeah, crazy. That, that's <laughs> great that you were able to find that closure. You know. Yeah, man. At the same time, you know that that story closes. But now you got a brand new, now, like now John said, a, you know, yeah. brand new beginning with your brothers, man. That's crazy. I know. I tell you too. That's the, exactly how you said it, man. Like ever since I've been back, I just feel like I have a, a whole new life now. Like I feel like I have a whole new life. Like yes, I am doing what I do, and I do what I do best is is is, is um teach and train people and change lives. But yeah. this this is different now. This is really truly different. Like now I have like so much to live for, so much to work on, so much to 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 build. You know what I mean? So. Just gonna try to better myself every day, man. That's it. That's all I can do for this one. Yeah, I mean, these are the stories that our our listeners love to hear about, right? I mean, it's not, yeah. you know, it's not like this guy has won this many fights. He has this, you know, he's a champion here, champion there. I mean, we you can get that off the internet, really. You know, you can look up somebody's information and find their win loss record, their titles, all that stuff. But man, your story of going home, searching for your dad, finding him, and then. Now you got a brand new story with your, you know, younger siblings. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, also, man, this is like me growing up alone. Like it, it was, it was different. Like you know, yes, I was grow, raised like traditionally by my grandparents. But as my grandfather, he, I didn't get to say as early, but as my grandfather, he got sick and stuff like that. That's when I started getting to this rebellious stage. I ended up going to like juvenile yeah. detention for a, juvenile detention for a few years when I was younger wow. as well. So wow. Yeah, yeah. But I'll tell you what, that that's what shaped me up to be the person who I am today. I was able to kind of grow up in that that American white community. So that's why I'm able to kind of like I can almost get redneck with it. Like I could really do it. Like I, I love I love country music. I mean, being raised in the, in that Nebraska, I'm over here in South Florida still going to country concerts. So um, they call you a cardang. Cardang. Yeah, call cardang. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah. Redneck. Redneck, redneck. redneck. <laughs> oh, man. Well, cool. Yeah. Well, that's what the podcast's all about, Jason. Um, yeah. Obviously, the athletic career is phenomenal, and and just we want people to see the person behind the athlete because um, every athlete has a story behind them, man. So, yeah, man, I really appreciate, it, man. I, you guys really brought me on to uh, to uh, tell my story, and it's just good to yeah, man. Thank you, thank, thank you for sharing. Something. Yeah, thank you, man, for having me, man. It's just, uh, no, like I said, man, it's a new life that I'm living now. Like, you know what I mean? Just being able to be part of different things. I mean, like I said, take the chance and get on. You know what I mean? Open your mouth, talk. You know what I mean? So. Hey, Jason, where can our viewers follow you on social media? I'm sure that, I'm sure everybody's going to want to know about, we're waiting for pictures of you and your brothers, right? So. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. Where can they follow you? <laughs> They can follow me on Somchai underscore Muay Thai. Um, it's going to be Somchai with a Y. Uh, unfortunately, it's supposed to be an I, but it's a Y. Uh, but Somchai underscore Muay Thai. And um, yeah, you guys will probably also see me on YouTube as well. So 
Just type right, in the name Jason Somchai. They call me the Raging Asian. So Jason, the Raging Asian Somchai. We saw that. And we'll put some links in the show notes, folks, if you need help finding those. But um, yeah, Jason. So folks, that, that kind of wraps up the interview today. Follow Jason. Also, follow us if you're not following us on, on Facebook, IG, Apple, Spotify, YouTube, all of our platforms. We would appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Co. Hey, guys. Thank you for um, you know following us and listening to another episode of C4 Podcast. All right. Have a good one. Take care. The C4 Podcast is brought to you by the Lao American Sports Hall of Fame. Visit us on the web at laoamericansports.com, celebrating the first, inspiring the next.